Today we're going to be growing salad greens indoors. I'm Todd from My View in the Woods. Today I want to show you how I'm growing my salad greens. You can see this mix right here. It's a beautiful mix from Fruition Seeds. This mix is 38 days old. You can see it's growing really well. Today I want to talk a little bit more about salad mixes. Um, I grow all my plants indoors. I'm sort of trapped here in this apartment for a while. So I still want to have some nice fresh vegetables for my meals. I'm tired, sick and tired of going to the grocery store and getting vegetables that I don't know how they've been treated, even if they're organically, how far they come from and how much nutrients they lost. So I'm trying to grow my own foods. So when I ever order seeds, I generally get a salad mix from whatever seed company I'm ordering from. This tray right here that you see, this mix is from Patrician Seeds in Central New York. Again, I just pick up salad mixes whenever I pick up seeds or whenever I see them. This is a good mix. It came 320, 300, about 350 seeds is grown in this tray. I think it's a little bit heavy. I'd rather see them a little bit lighter. I'll let the leaf, each leaf get a little bit bigger, but um, you know, we're gonna do some experiments here and find out. The mix we're gonna plant today is from Park Seeds. It's 200 seeds. It's their Lettuce Mini Greens blend. I picked this up basically as I ordered strawberry plants and needed a little bit more money for save $6.50 for free shipping. So I picked up a couple of these salad mixes. So we're going to plant this today. It's about 200 seeds. So we're going to see how 200 seeds looks in one of these 10 by 20 flats compared to 350. So today I'm going to show you how I'm planting these. And then I'll show you some other videos later on and how this experiment came out. So I'll just show you how I'm going to grow them and let's get started. So the equipment you're going to need today to start your salad green mix are 10 by 20, uh, it's a 10 by 20 tray with holes in it. I don't know if you can see the holes. Another 10 by 20 tray without holes. And the purpose for that is for bottom watering. I, I really enjoy, I enjoy, I don't know if I enjoy it, okay. I really think that bottom watering does a better job than top watering it. It stops any of the dampening off diseases of your seeds. It's easier to control and you're not putting divots in the, in the, in the soil with the water when you're pouring it on or getting the leaves wet. So the, the idea is to take a tray, a solid tray, put a quarter inch of water in it, take your salad mix tray with the holes in it and just gently set it on top and let the water soak up from the bottom. That's how I bottom water. I've been doing it with the microgreens. It's been working really well. I did it with that lettuce mix. It's worked really well. And obviously with the double cut method for the tomatoes and peppers, in reality, they're bottom watering also. One other thing you're gonna need compared to microgreen seeds for the lettuce mix is a cover. Lettuce green or lettuce seeds seem to like sunlight to germinate. They germinate better on their sunlight, so I just have a clear cover that will go over the top of the seed mix until they start germinating pretty well. And then once, they're, once they have enough leaves, the majority of the seeds are germinated, then I'll take this cover right off. That's generally what I do, let the grow lights get to them. Another thing I do is I will put these on a heat mat. There's a 10, I think it's a 19 and a half by 10, 10 inch heat mat. Uh, the little extra bottom heat helps the seeds germinate. It does go right through the second tray. It's not as efficient as putting your soil tray right onto the heat mat, but it still works. It still works well. It heats it up eventually and, and uh, helps the plants germinate. Also, the f you could use half trays if you wanted to. I think since these plants are going to be growing 30 to 40, maybe even up to 50 days, that a full size soil is going to get you better root mass and a better plant. So I'd use full size 10 by 20 trays for this. So let me fill this. Oh, potting soil. So I really want to make my own potting soils, but in the apartment, I really don't have room to start stockpiling all this equipment. So I've been buying mixes. The first one I tried was the Royal Gold Basement Mix. It's worked really well. This time I'm trying the Foxfire 
Bush Doctor Coco Loco Mix. See if I can get it without spilling it. It's it, so far it seems to be working pretty well. You know, it has all the all the good ingredients that you would in its core base. I like core over peat based. I know a lot of people like to mix, but I think the core um, is easier to wet and it's also easier to drain and it's more sustainable. I mean, sustainability to me is important. Um, I don't put it right there at the top like some people do, but if that's part of the equation, then you know it gets worked in. So I think a coconut core based soil is really what people should be going for. And this has all the appropriate beneficial fungi, bacteria, uh, worm castings, um, and the different type of uh, natural organic fertilizers and it is a lot of the other mixes. So far I've grown a few um, microgreens in it and it's been doing really well. So I think it's a good soil and we'll see how it does in the salad mix. So I'm going to change the camera angle so I'm pointing down on the trays. I fill it up with soil. Uh, you're going to enjoy some music and then we'll get right back to it when we put the seeds on top of the soil. see I do take quite a bit of time filling the tray I fill it about halfway full give it a little compaction and put some more soil into it I try to get it as level as I can with as few divots as I can because when we start pouring seeds onto it those seeds have a tendency to go into the holes and not evenly space out your seeds so I really do take some time to make this surface as flat as I can I also like it to be raised a little bit on the sides. That keeps the seeds away from the sides and back onto your tray. And just a little bit below, I'm about maybe an eighth of an inch below the top of this tray. This will expand some too when it gets wet. But you can see I have it pretty level. Now there's one more thing I need to do. I need to spritz this down with water and pre-moisten it. I forgot my spray bottle. I'll be right back with a spray bottle. We'll spray it down and put some seed on. All right, I'm back. So I just use a regular spray bottle. Use um, non-chlorinated water. This it actually is water out of an aquarium. I just dump it out. It helps me with my water changes in my aquarium. And we're just gonna wet this surface down. And then I'm gonna get this all organized and I'll show you how I spread out the seeds. So as you see, I take quite a bit of time to wet this down. Uh, I like to see the moisture glisten off it. The one, it's going to hold the seeds when they hit. Two, that's the moisture that it's going to use uh, to help germinate the seeds. When I put the seeds on, I'm going to hit it again with water. And then when I get it out to the heat mat, heat mat, I'll show you. I do do some bottom watering right off the top. So let me get the seeds ready. So here's our packet of seeds. These can be a pain to get the seeds out, so I generally tap them 
make sure they're all set to the bottom, and then I just have a container to pour them into. Well, I tell you what, there's no way there's 200 seeds there. So I've got a couple more packages. I'm going to put them in, and then we'll get started. So here's the amount of seeds I ended up out of two packages. I don't know if you can see that very well or not. I'm not very impressed. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to put them on onto the soil anyways. So I generally put them in some sort of container that has I can control the rate of spill. But I'm still not going to put them on the soil with this. A lot of people will shake this right on like that. I use a crushed pepper container. It's got the little screens on the top. I find it works pretty good. So I just take my hand make a funnel out of it. Pour the seeds in. And then put the top back on. Another advantage to this is if you're messing around and moving things around, you can always put the top on and you haven't got to worry about spilling your seeds. Not that I've ever done that. No, no, I've never done that. So here's our soil tray. And what we're going to try to do is spread these seeds on here as evenly as we can. So it's just a matter of popping the top. And then go across the whole tray lightly. And then once you've gone over the tray, you find the spots that are a little bit light. And you put a little bit more seed there. And you just kind of keep doing that until all the seed that you have is out of the shaker. Sometimes with a shaker, a few of the seeds get stuck in the bottom. You have to do have to take the top off to get them all off. And again, there's only just a couple on here. So now that they're evenly spread as best I can with the shaker, then I take a look at them and find out where they're like, this area here is a little bit dense, so then I just use my finger and spread the seeds out a little bit where they're dense to areas that don't have any seeds. And then once I'm done, again, we're, we're trying this experiment. So this is apparently 400 seeds from Park. Um, I would argue that there probably wasn't 200 seeds in each packet, maybe 150 of 125. Not very impressed. But once I get the seeds in, then we go and spray it with water again. So again, what the water does is going to help obviously wet the seeds and slightly push them down into... Again, don't be afraid to soak it. You, if the coconut core, it's... With coconut core, it's almost impossible to overwater, especially since I haven't watered the bottom yet. So you want to soak it in really good, get the seeds soaked. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, I'll get a close up here in a minute, that it does push the seeds in a little bit. So now we're ready to put the dome on it and put it on the heat mat. I'll show you that next. Okay, here's my setup for growing. Just on my plant stand. I have a VitoSun 10 by 20 heat mat. It's plugged in. It's supposed to heat the soil up to about 20 degrees more than the room temperature. You can see you can put your hand on it. It feels warm, but it's not particularly hot. I put my empty tray right on top of that. And I add a little bit of water. This is for the bottom watering to start off with. See, it's not very even, but that's all right. It still absorbs. I tried to even it out a little bit. It's because of the uh, way the cord sets into the mat. So I got some water in there, and then I just take my seeds, and I just slowly, gently place it down on top. The water is soaked up from the bottom. This lip does hold it off the bottom a little bit, so it can drain. If it looks a little weird with the light, that's because I have these Unifun grow lights. They don't have any green spectrum light, so it's all blue and red. It's supposed to be good for plant growth. It seems to be working all right. All my grow lights seem to do a good job. If you 
helps that a little bit during transplanting. You just pack it down in. You can go over and top water again. What I do is I wait about oh half a day. Tonight I'll come back through and I'll top water them again. And to finish it off, I put on the clear dome. You can see probably a little bit of the light reflecting there on the top. So that's all I do. Again, I'll come back tonight, I'll top water them again, I'll spray them down, put the top back on, and in about two days they'll start germinating. Well that's how I grow my salad mixes indoors in a 10 by 20 tray. We'll have to see if those park seeds come out as nice as these. This is a beautiful tray. This is going to be ready to be harvested tonight for dinner. I don't know how many meals I'll get out of it, but I'll let you know. Looks good, doesn't it? Nice salad mix. But that's the reason with the park seeds. Maybe I'm a little premature. Maybe the seeds will turn out all right. Um, just don't seem to be too impressed with them yet. But that's why we keep buying from different seed companies. Just keep experimenting until you find that seed company that gives you the seeds that you're looking for. Maybe overall for all your seeds or for just a variety of your seeds. So again, this is how I grow my salad greens. I think there's are evidence that this method works pretty well. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button below. It really helps the channel grow. Um, hit like if you liked this video. You can hit dislike if you didn't like the video too. One more thing, I really enjoy comments, so please leave a comment below. I answer all my comments. I might not get right back to you immediately, but within a day I generally am right back on the comments, telling you how much I appreciate that you comment, answering any questions you have, answering any criticisms. Um, that's what YouTube's all about. It's about building a community, and that's what I want to do. So again, try these salad greens. Try to grow some salad greens. I think you're going to find that the taste is so much better than the lettuce that you can buy in the grocery stores. Have a great day.